Our special guest, Tim Urban. You can join me up over here. Let's take a seat here. Uh, so uh, let's kind of start right at what we just talked about in the introduction. Uh, you mentioned this film started as a text, and then it became behind the curve. Can you talk about what was it about necessarily the film uh, and the, the subjects that made you want to make this film? Uh, yeah, so we had seen, probably as a lot of you have, you've seen Flat Earth in the news and the media and sports, whatever. And a lot of what we thought was, well, this can't really be a thing, is it? Or is it really a thing? So we started looking into it, and we discovered pretty quickly, yes, it is a real thing. And we were looking for ideas to make a documentary, and no one else had been doing it. So we just decided, let's, let's give it a go and see what happens. So we met Mark, and as soon as we left that shoot, we said, OK, we're ready to go. We can make the rest of this. We have it. And then what was kind of like the process like of reaching out to Mark and beyond just like subjects in general, including Tim, like how did that go when you're like, hey, I'm going to show up with some cameras and let's talk about this. Like what was that like? And this, I'll also include you in that, but for you. Um, we, well, it started with Mark. Mark's very accessible. He was his phone number on his videos. So we just, I think we emailed or called him and just said hi. And he's, uh, as you can tell, he's a very open guy. He's very receptive to us talking to him. And so he said, sure, come up. Uh, his mom made me cookies and scones, and it was lovely, and she's a wonderful woman. Uh, and yeah, it just started there, and then because we talked to Mark, then we went to Patricia next, and they vouched for us more or less and said, you know, these guys aren't out to make fun of you, make a hit piece or anything like that. So uh, some people were a little more hesitant, but over time, they, they allowed us to come in. And then Tim, in terms of your experience, uh, I kind of want to know how you got involved, and what was the experience like? Having to not only like be on camera, but kind of talk about this, and if you could expand on that. Yeah, I um, I didn't read the email that like carefully enough, and I went and showed up, and I thought they were all flat earthers. Um, <laughs> and so it was it was like 15 minutes in, and, I, and then and then they were like, oh, oh no, we're we're making the doc about, and I, and I, and I said that things made more sense, but um, but I, I actually I think it's uh well first of all I had just coincidentally. I had gone through the same kind of, is this is this real? Uh, you know, a, a few years earlier, and then I had gone into the spiral and said, oh my god, it's real. And I, I really did. I subscribed to the podcast. I was like, I just can't get enough of this. It's so interesting to like hear how the logic, you know, how they would make the logic work. And, and so, um, it, it's it's something that I I'm already interested in, uh, not just in the actual like voyeurism of this community, but also. Um, it, the psychology is interesting, and and honestly, I I, I really um, I, I I find it very humbling because I look around me at all of my hyper partisan friends, and honestly, it's it, they're, they're, there's in certain areas like they're not an ounce more reasonable. They're they're, they're the confirmation bias is the, the exact same. So it's um I think it's an important it's an important concept for us all to absorb. Yeah. Uh, on that note, I do want to open it up to the floor uh, for questions, and we got a gentleman right there. Uh, yeah, so from being around these, um, this community, how much of it did you think was actually out to find the truth versus the relationship building and the community that was in finding somebody like yourself? Yeah, so, so the question was, uh, if you didn't hear in the back, uh, I, I, in terms of like dealing with this community, did you find kind of like how much was it of finding a community versus trying to find the truth? Like, how, how did that kind of balance out? Well, I, I think it's, you know, it's always, it starts with a question, you know, is the earth flat or not? And I think you find these videos and you start commenting and maybe they respond and you start this relationship. And I don't think anybody's out saying like, I want to join this community to be, to find friends or anything. I think that's not exactly right, but I think it becomes part of who you are and you start like that's your daily routine you're going on checking the videos seeing the newest ones because you know there's a lot of content and mark what mark in the podcast he said there's so much content you could watch it all in your entire lifetime and that's true uh, every day every week there's another another podcast or another video put up and it's yeah there's a lot out there and there's a big community yeah, of course all right we're gonna keep moving uh yeah uh we got we'll go in the glasses and then in the denim jacket did you meet any uh, flat earthers who stopped flat earthers out of the adult of the exam? Uh, 
Uh, so the question is, did you meet any flat earthers uh, who uh, kind of questioned it uh, based on the results of what we saw in the documentary? No. <laughs> uh, yeah, in the denim, and then we'll go into the middle. Yep. So the question is then for those. Do you that, mean personally or like with the the theory? Just the theory. Like I don't really know why why people believe that. Well, yeah. Sorry, her question. I don't know if anybody heard it. It's it's, it's why do people believe it? Um, I I think, you know, this is generalizing a lot. But if you feel like there is a lie being perpetrated and, and a giant conspiracy, you're not going to stand for that. Um, so once you feel like that's what's happening then you're going to continue fighting for that information. I also can add, like, it's, I think, um, you know, humans are fairly simple creatures, and we want certain things. We want meaning. We want to feel righteous. We want to feel good. We want to feel connected. Um, and lots of us, lots of us in this room, like, we're struggling with a lot of that. A lot of, you know, meaning's hard. Purpose is hard. And um, I think any kind of dogma, uh, the really hardcore dogmatics, a lot of times it's, it's almost like a, like a get rich quick kind of like, you know, here's here's your meaning, your purpose, your community, your, your this is everything, and you're 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 the hero, and you get to play the hero, and I think that um, that feels really really good. So I think if when you can start believing, suddenly all these other parts of your brain really want to keep this feeling, they want to believe because it feels good for all these other reasons, and I think that that's going to lead to uh, this. The flat Earth is is a is a mechanism to get all that. And there's a hundred other mechanisms you can find. This is one of them. And so you're going to find, anytime you have one of these hardcore dogmas, you're going to find people using it for that kind of thing. Yeah, and I want to add to that. Um, we have psychiatrists and a psychologist in the, in the film, and it's not because we're saying flat earthers need psychiatrists or psychologists. It's, it's, <laughs> right. it's more saying, why do people believe this hard in something that most other people do not? <laughs> uh, just right yeah. I don't. I don't think so. That's that wasn't our experience. Um, I think there's a range, and I think um, I don't think that came into our thinking at all when we were making the film. But it was certainly interesting to us too. Like, you know, it's it. As um, Nathan says, you know, they're not living in their mom's basement, um, and at the same time, they're not, you know, it's, it's a range. It's a range like anything else. So. Uh, to each person, I can't speak to each person, um, but yeah, it ra ranges. Like, Bob has his own business that he started. Um, Patricia has a radio station, and she owned a shop in New Orleans for a while. Like, it's it's nothing secret, but it's not. Nathan that works for the, uh, the legal, 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 legal Zoom? Zoom? Is that? Yeah. Legal yeah. Shield. Oh, legal Shield, sorry. Yeah, legal Shield. Back floor. Uh, let's go one, two, and then in the back. So, yeah, one, got your hand up right there. Yeah, so the question is uh, a, a lot of the subjects are, uh, especially within the film itself, North American, is there an international element, and kind of did you find that in your filmmaking process? Uh, yeah, there is actually definitely a pretty big international element. I would say, in our experience, it tends to be mostly English-speaking countries. Like, it seems like there's a lot of them in Australia, the UK. Uh, there is, you know, a fair number of them in Canada, from what we can tell. Um, but there are a couple other uh, countries that have a large contingent. There was a big meetup recently in Korea, I believe, uh, that Nathan was actually speaking at, I think. Uh, so you do find them all around the, uh, all around the world. But, uh, yeah. uh, and then we'll move the gentleman, and then we'll go up to the back. Yeah, go for it. Uh, if you take me with Mark Sargent, who is a number of the, the people in your film, there's this impression of the thrill of influencing people, whether you believe or not. But just you get an impression of this amazement you part from him, this excitement just at their influence. And I don't know how that feel, felt to you more in person. It's something that, that feels to come across in the film. Yeah, and so the question kind of is about Mark Sargent, but beyond of like there is kind of that thrill of influence and in terms of your experience, not only did Mark, but beyond, did, did you notice that and what, as you were interviewing your subjects? Um, well, with Mark, I mean, he, he loves talking to people. He's not 
one to go up to somebody on the street and and you know tell them all about flat earth but if they ask him he's happy to talk about it um but as far as that i think it's it's a lot of what tim says uh, it's it's this feeling like you have all the answers all of a sudden because mark tends to if you ask him a question he has the answer ready to go no matter if it's the first time you heard the question he'll process it he'll use his logic and tell you what is the official answer for him what he thinks what he thinks uh, so we got time for a couple more questions. I know there was back, middle, and then we're going to go far right, I think, in the red or pink for the final question. So up top, back, middle. Yeah, I mean, I like. I think I, I don't know if you can speak specifically for Mark and Patricia, but the question. What's sorry? Yeah, like, if you were to see it with your own eyes. Well, I mean, yeah, I think the question would then be for them. Well, who's sending me up? Have I been like drugged? I mean, because I'm not saying it to make fun. I think if if you believe the conspiracy is that big, there's only so many people you trust, all the way. And so I think unless his mother and Patricia sent him up in the rocket or were, you know, there with him looking out the window, I think you could say the, uh, the window is a projection and I'm really in like a tub of water or something like that. And, and, and I think you do a lot of things to keep your reality the way you want it. Now, zero gravity, I'm not sure how that would feel, but anything, Tim, for this? Uh, I was going to oh, yeah. uh, say, yeah, we had a... Um... We had a great quote actually from Dr. Joe Pierre that we didn't use in the film to address that very question, where he said in his experience there would probably be a gamut. Like that would be enough for a lot of people. Uh, and they would draw the line there and they'd say, and I think like if, if you look at the people in the movie, I would suspect that Jaron, uh, the guy doing the laser test, would probably be among them, but that's my own personal opinion. Of like they would say, I've experienced this, that's enough for me, and uh, I don't need anything else. But again, like there would be a, a group of people who would probably no matter what say well it could be you know, like you said like a tv screen on the window it could be any number of things so yeah it would depend on the person yeah i mean it's uh, confirmation bias uh can override uh the entire scientific method process uh no matter what and that's called being non-falsifiable that's what it means to be non-falsifiable there's nothing that someone could present you that would make you say oh you know what actually i'm wrong about that and uh you see it everywhere, non-falsifiability from on, on people who seem otherwise reasonable once they get into dogma mode. And, and so it, it doesn't mean falsifiable if this, because the point is there's if, there's plenty of evidence. There's the, 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 the 15 degree drag. There's, you know, so there's always, is, is if you're non-falsifiable, it means you have a mechanism in your brain that will be able to take anything that comes in and say, well, the, you know, the, 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 the sun is folding in on itself. There's always something. So it's not even a question to me. This is very obvious to me that the answer would be that they would, they would continue to believe that that this was a conspiracy. Um, it's it has it's something that if, if it's going to turn, it's going to turn. It's going it's that they're going to let go in their own head. They're going to change in their own head. Nothing on the outside world is going to is going to change that. Uh, and then yeah, the final question was yeah. Um, <laughs> as far as the nba goes what yeah yeah the question was uh in terms of like there there's kind of been a spike in the nba about uh kind of uh, this flat earth movement and if there's any correlation that you would find uh, i really don't have an explanation for that i'm, 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 I'm sorry <laughs> yeah uh, all right, well, we can actually fit in them one more. So right there. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Yeah. Well, we don't need to talk about the who's necessarily in the room. I mean, that's personal account. 
I've seen, um, I've, I've watched a sailboat go out, 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 and just kind of descend below the horizon. Uh, I can think of 10 or 15 or 20 examples. You know, you see the, the lunar eclipse. That's the shadow of the Earth crossing the path between the sun and the moon. There's lots and lots and lots of times when I can say, you know, when it, when, when it, uh, it's just, just a lot, you know, it's, I haven't seen it from afar myself. But also, aside from all the things I've seen, the horizon and everything like that, um, it, it, it doesn't mesh with anything that my life experience has told me that all of the pictures of the earth, all of the astronauts, all of the other things are lies. It would, it, it would, it, every single other thing I've experienced is, is, uh, tells me that that's not true either. So, uh, to have to, um, a not believe my own eyes when the sailboat's going down over the horizon, then B, to say all of these people are lying, um, that to me is as, as unbelievable as that I'm gonna unzip my skin and I'm a lizard inside. Um, neither one, in my experience, has any kind of uh, correlation. Well, uh, on that note, we do have to wrap up, but before we do, uh, I just wanna say, I, legitimately, like, on behalf of this entire like panel here, when we saw this film here, and I think what really like drew us is that you gave voice to every one of your subjects. Like this was never intended to be some kind of kind of one way or, or the other. You showcase your subjects so well, and as documentary programmers, that's what we love. You you trusted all of your subjects that were here. You listened to them. You let them speak. So I just want to say thank you for the world premiere, and ladies and gentlemen, once again for everyone on here. <laughs> thank you so much.